Maddie's Mental Health Podcast, aiming to spread awareness on mental health by sharing the real life stories of those who've experienced it firsthand. Cord. Mr. Burke is here today. What is going on? Mr. Burke, I gotta put up this chair. I feel lower than you. Maybe you're just, maybe you're just taller. All right. I'm up now. How are you doing today, man? I'm doing pretty good. Yourself? Not too bad. It's a new year. New me. Yeah. Yeah. Any resolutions? <laughs> um, yeah. Maybe uh, get more sleep. Not a bad one. Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe I'm just thinking that because uh, last night I didn't get much sleep, but... True enough. You know, always self-improving, you know? Yeah. That's, uh, that's the goal. That's my goal. How about you? Any resolutions? Nothing yet. Nothing yet? Yeah. No, no big ones yet for me. No. But uh, I'm sure something will come along. Yeah. I uh, actually... I work in a gym now. I'm a personal trainer, so... Oh, um, okay. Where at? Uh, good life. Oh, okay. Good right life, on. Give myself a plug here. Yeah, quick plug. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, if you want to go looking for a trainer and you go to Good Life Fitness <laughs> and you're going to start this month because it's January and that's the busiest time of the year. Sold. Sold. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, there's going to be a lot of people in the gym, which is always yeah, cool. Yeah, be busy um, January. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, so I'm really excited to be here today, and that's awesome that you wanted to come in. Uh, you're going to talk about something that's really important, I think, um, for athletes and for anybody, and it's something I've experienced myself, too, um, and that is um, your experience with concussions. Yep. Um, so thanks so much for being here, man. I really appreciate it. Um, Not a problem. Thanks I can't for wait. having me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, of course. And I can't wait to talk about it. And um, let's get into it. You can just start wherever you like. All right, let's get right into it. Uh, I'm just I'm here to talk about like my experience with concussions and kind of the mental health that follows after. Um, and I mean I haven't I haven't really told that many people the whole story. Maybe two or three people, but uh, just, you know the reason that that I felt I could talk about it now was. Uh, seeing an interview there probably like the first week of December of uh, the old Boston Bruins goalie Tim Thomas he was getting inducted to the the U.S. Hockey Hall of Fame and, and he amazing. broke da- and he uh, broke down in his interview and, and he started talking about uh, like why he left the game of hockey and just kind of almost disappeared for a couple of years and when he got into like the nitty gritty of it and he was saying how like after that he went and he was living in a bunker in the woods for two years and he he couldn't talk to his family he couldn't talk to his dad like just and then seeing them like suffer and it was it was almost like a relief to hear somebody like going through like having the same symptoms that I had because up until that point, like I, I tried to talk to like a couple different people, but I couldn't really get the words out. And in my own head, it just seemed like unbelievable that a couple hits to the head could make me feel like that for so long. Mm -hmm. But just hearing him say that, that was, like I said, just a huge relief. And it finally, uh, I decided like, well, I should probably talk to my parents about this and and it was and it was when he said about his his brain scan that he got a couple years after when two-thirds of his brains got five percent blood flow and the other thirds at 50 percent then i'm like holy shit like that's some scary stuff like Mm -hmm. if i'm having the same symptoms as him like where am i where am i at so Mm -hmm that's when I just said it's time like I have to tell my parents and and that's when they got right involved and and now we're taking the steps to getting a brain scan and going to the family doctor and stuff like that that's awesome man yeah that's great like I'm glad they heard that story and then I'm sure like letting it out was such a relief yeah it really was and just having support yeah because uh I mean, we talked about this a little bit before, just about ran over the story and stuff, and I'll let you know that I kind of had a similar one um, playing football, but um, you really can isolate yourself. That's one of the big things, I think, you know? And, like, when you're having all these symptoms, like, it's just, 
it, yeah, it gets really dark. The isolation is worse, but also the thought of having to talk to somebody about anything would drive my anxiety like through the roof. I'd be, and then I'd be running the conversation through my head for an hour or two after. Like, did mm-hmm. that make sense? Is is that how I'd normally answer that? Or mm-hmm. could they tell that I'm not okay? And you just you overthink everything almost because you mm-hmm. kind of you don't know like who you are anymore. Mm-hmm. Right. So did you feel like, was that something completely new to concussions? Did you feel any kind of anxiety before or was this all just because of the concussion you felt like you weren't yourself and... Yeah, like, I mean, and you can probably agree with me, like, you have, you have, like, those butterflies in your stomach and stuff before, like, big games and stuff like that, like, that nervous, like, anxious energy, but, like, all growing up, I... I like fed off that. Like my dad would always tell me like, no, like that's a good thing. You got those like Mm -hmm. butterflies, like use that energy. And so growing up, like I used to love that feeling, but then you only feel like that maybe the morning before your game up until puck drop or the first snap or whatever. But when you have those feelings day after day after day, it, it really starts to like take a toll on you. Hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent, man. Um. So, your first concussion, um, you got. Okay, so yeah, maybe talk about. You want a quick con- concussion background before? Yeah. 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 So, um, well, growing up, like, you probably agree with me too, like no one really knew what concussions were like when we were younger it was like no one really knew what it was it was just you got hit in the head and you you just moved on but yeah it wasn't until the last like couple years whenever they start really like breaking down what is a concussion Mm -hmm. so i think the first one that i actually had like doctor diagnosed was uh in 2012 which grade 10 year i think it was uh a car crash just t-boned i was in the passenger seat like t-boned on my side just drilled my head off the window and i mean i had a headache for maybe a day or two and was just obviously zonked and my whole body was sore just it felt like i got hit by a car but like maybe a week the symptoms lasted and then you just you bounce back and then uh 20 late 2012 uh playing hockey just another pretty much just a hit to the head um and that one like same idea that one I would say is mild like I'd seen the stars and everything and was dizzy for a bit but I don't really remember much symptoms after that one it was it was more just like headache for a day or so and then kind of went away Mm -hmm. uh then 2013 uh another car accident same idea like hit on my side I was in the passenger seat again drilled my head off the window again I think the window broke this time but uh like same idea just you know you have a bit of a headache and and you're like almost like drowsy and a bit of a fog for like a week or two but Mm -hmm. then again I don't know maybe just because I was so young just like everything heals so much quicker you just you bounce back and then um one more that wasn't really diagnosed by a doctor that was uh my final year midget over at atlantics and that one that was the first time i remember things like just going black for a couple seconds and but then again like back then i didn't didn't really know what concussion was so I don't even think I left the game I'm pretty sure I played the rest of the game and but yeah no like I don't remember any real long lasting symptoms after 
any of those week maybe two at the most and yeah you're right back to where you want to be or right yeah you were fine good to go again yeah um so yeah so you had those the symptoms weren't very long lasting um and then you had your and then 2016 you had uh your first 20s, one was a little different. Yeah, 2016 was was the bad one. Um, December 23rd was the date. Uh, just just a sh- a shitty uh, a shitty incident. Um, the last thing I remember is uh, playing hockey. I'm I'm coming across the other team's blue line into their end and. I, I go to make a move on the defenseman to go from the outside to kind of cut into the middle. And that's the last thing I remember. And uh, I got like teammates or whatever kind of fill me in on what happened after. But uh, when I cut in, one one of their forwards came across from center, just hit me directly elbow like to the head. And as soon as he hit me, the, I was out cold my whole body cartwheels first thing to hit the ice is my face and that's I'm out for like I don't I don't actually remember anything like coming to till like a good 20 minutes later Mm -hmm. like let's say there was I think there was like six or seven minutes left in the period period ended team came into the dressing room and I was in there they had like their intermission talk, whatever. And I remember like coming to as they were like going out to start the third period. Were and you playing still at that point or did they take you out? I got taken out like because, yeah, they, I was like out on the ice and then I guess I slowly kind of got into the fetal position and then helped off right off and, um, it was just unfortunate. Like our head coach wasn't at the game. Our trainer wasn't at the game. My parents weren't at the game. Like, so just another like group of parents on the team, they ended up taking me to a Summerside hospital and it's all like really fuzzy. But I, I remember the nurse was giving them like a real hard time about me not getting stretchered to the hospital. Mm-hmm. They couldn't get over that when someone gets knocked out, they don't get stretchered. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, but... So... Yeah, and... That's that's when the doctor... Like, they didn't do any scans or anything, which I, I didn't, like, put that together at the time. I didn't know that they did that or whatever, but that that's when the doctor sat down and, like, told me, like what a concussion was he like kind of broke it all down he's like even you know you hit your head on like a door frame or whatever and you see stars like that's a concussion it's mild but it's it's a concussion and Mm -hmm. when you start adding those ones up then then you're looking at a decently high number Mm -hmm. but yeah just he, he he like sat me down, explained to me all about the concussions. He he gave me the sheet here and and it has like your your five or six steps. You know you you have to get no symptoms from just like laying around, and then you can go to light exercise like walks. And then if you don't have symptoms, you can go to like light practice, no contact. And you got to keep like working your way up. And if you start feeling symptoms, you got to drop back down. But I mean, they're asking like your symptoms. They're asking like if you're, if you're dizzy, confused, like headaches, are you nauseous, stuff like that. They're not really asking like about your mental health. Like, are, like, are you anxious? Are you depressed? Like any of that. Mm -hmm. And I mean, looking back, I should have been there with like a family member or something because in my head like I'm I'm the captain of the team I'm team needs me I'm just trying to tell the doctor 
whatever I think he wants to hear so mm-hmm. I can go back to playing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. hundred percent. And you get so locked in because, I mean, like, you're obviously so passionate about the sport and you're still young. And yep. it's like, this is like a huge part of me is this game and like what's going on here. So I need exactly. to get back, right? So. Yeah. And I mean, it, it really, it couldn't have happened at a worse time because I had so many changes in my life right around that time, like around December. Like I had just, just bought my grandmother's house probably two weeks before that. So I'm a little anxious kind of anyways, cause I'm, I'm a bit, of, I'm an adult now. Like I got bills to pay. I got to worry about like paying the mortgage and all that stuff. And, and like, that's kind of the same time that, that Kelsey and I started dating. And so first like real serious girlfriends. So all these changes are happening at the same time. So like when I start f- first having like the constant anxiousness and like a bit of depression or whatever, you kind of, I almost attributed it to those things, kind of not all the concussion. Like I just, I didn't really know what was going on. I didn't know because just all the changes, I couldn't really tell that it was just the hit that was causing me to feel like that. Mm -hmm. Right. And it kind of fucking, um, one of my trainers said this, uh, you know, concussions are, are um, common in football. And they're like, the last person you should ask um, if they're okay to go play again is someone who just got a head injury. Yeah. You know? So it's like, it can, it, can, it disrupts the part of your brain that says like, this is not normal. And this is like, I'm injured. That's causing this, right? Because mm-hmm. um, yeah, it impacts your mental health in that way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And and that's and that's like some of the stuff that that I started struggling with is like decision making. Like I I would wake up in the morning and I wouldn't know where to start. Like what do I do first? I was struggling with that. Mm-hmm. Waking up and I'm already I'm lost. Mm-hmm. I don't know what to eat, like what to do. Mm-hmm. And I mean that's that's when I started like abusing marijuana because I wouldn't say all the time, but there'd be times where I'm almost, I feel like I'm in that like fight or flight state. Like your adrenaline's like just pumping at full bore. And that seemed to be the only thing that was kind of like leveling me out. Cause mm-hmm. I, I couldn't take that. Just the constant, like you're on edge, like ready to fight or flight. But mm-hmm. And, and yeah, I get like after, after the, the December one, like, cause they call it like two concussions there in the matter, like two seconds, like for the first like week or so, I'm kind of, I'm in a fog, I'm in a daze, like, I don't really know like what's going on. I'm just kind of going through the motions, but it, it was like after that where I really did feel like lost like I didn't I didn't know exactly like who I was anymore Mm -hmm. and that's when I started having like real problems with communication and like even talking to like one of my best friends that everything I said I'd be running it back through my head like did that make sense like did I take too long to answer like is that how Mark Burke would normally answer that uh can they tell that I'm like not right? And it just, it's, that's not healthy at all to no. be questioning like everything you say and do. And, mm-hmm. and that's like when I was like starting to get depressed. Cause I was like, who am I? Like, I just mm-hmm. don't know anymore. Mm-hmm. And obviously the weeds not like helping that, but the time being, it was, I guess, numb in the pain. Like, I couldn't have went to bed most nights if I didn't. Mm-hmm. Like I'd have to smoke myself into a coma almost to yeah. go to bed. Mm-hmm. Right. I know. Um, I know the exact feeling you're talking about about like 
not knowing who you are and like what I normally say that I went through that too and like and then you start thinking fucked up things like or at least I did like is this what I'm gonna be like now is yes. this the new version of me like, yeah is this like my brain never I'm never gonna be me again like yeah. this is what I am now I can't get me back mm. you know I had a lot of thoughts like that yeah I, I mean shortly after December 1 I, I don't think I'd gotten there yet but yeah we'll get into it later but it, it was more the the one in March where I started like having those thoughts um but yeah like f- from the so December 23rd I get the double concussion and I was back playing hockey January 11th okay so which, a couple weeks later yeah not a lot of time same no. idea family doctor calls you in because he gets his report from Summerside Hospital so he's doing his checkup or whatever with the family doctor and pretty much he's just asking me you know do you have headaches are you dizzy like nauseous those kind of things and I mean I I'm really just telling him what I think he wants to hear like Mm -hmm. I want to get back to playing hockey because I can't stand just sitting home like doing nothing Mm -hmm. so I mean and that's completely wrong like you should not be doing that no 100% yeah, something like a, a severe concussion like that where you're knocked out, you need a lot longer than two or three weeks to, mm-hmm. to rest. Mm-hmm. Two or three weeks and then maybe start going for walks or something like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You shouldn't be jumping right back in playing. 100%, yeah. And like I said, if if I if the trainer was at the game or if, if my parents were at the game, I don't think I would have been allowed to go back that soon but mm-hmm. they would have seen how bad it was at the time right they seen the hit I might not have played the rest of the year you never know yeah right yeah uh, man I'm, I'm honestly so glad you're talking about this and hopefully uh, it can reach somebody who needs it but like yeah because this is so common like I know a lot of people in football in my little circle mm-hmm. in in this island um that have went through the same thing where they played through it, didn't tell anybody. Yeah. I've like trained kids that same, same thing. And like, it's, it really is. Cause you, it's not an, it's an internal injury, right? Yeah. So you, you can, you can hide it. It's not like you have a broken wrist and people see the cast or they see the bone sticking out. Yeah. No one can see that you're hurting like that bad. Yeah. But it's like the worst thing you can hurt. Yeah. It's your brain. It's, it's everything, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, and like really just like, um, I mean, we'll get into this more later about like this, how you recover and stuff, but like mm-hmm. after the initial impact, like, I mean, I was just training a kid the other week and he was telling me he had concussions. He's only 16 and uh, he had like a few and then he had like a minor one not too long ago. I was like, man, just don't get hit in the head for like a year mm-hmm. like a year like if you, as soon as you get that first one yeah like just don't play like that's it. if i could go back and myself advice or anybody advice yeah be like if you get one take a f- take the rest of the season off yeah it's a big deal right now but it won't be in a year when your head's fine right yeah it's it's not worth it right and like it just it's so easy to get another one right after and if you let it heal completely you could be back to you again and like potentially like you always get one a little bit easier Mm -hmm. but if you really let it recover your chances of getting another one's gonna go way down yeah exactly um yeah anyway i'm really glad you talked about this yep it's so so common it it is more common than we'd think yeah 100 percent. yeah but yeah and even after the december one like so january 4th I go back to school for my third block for electrical and it was just a complete gong show. It, looking back, it was probably better to do that than if I had to work through that time period because like going to school, I was I was lucky to get up there four days a week out mm-hmm. of the five. Yeah. And when I did make it there, your first lectures at nine 
then you you have like free time to do work from 10 to 1 and then 1 o'clock's the second lecture and then you're supposed to be there till like 3 o'clock or whatever you got to be there for six hours and then you can then you can go home but the days that I did get make it up there I'd go 9 o'clock lecture be over 10 I'd go out to the truck start it for half an hour heat cranked shut her off and I'd sleep in the truck till almost 1 go into the cafeteria get something to eat go to the afternoon lecture go home Mm -hmm. and like being there was just almost like a waste of time I couldn't focus like I couldn't listen in class Mm -hmm. like I couldn't sit there and do any work I was just basically like bluffing just going through the motions there but Mm -hmm. like looking back I don't know if I could have worked so it's tough to say right but and then I I started kind of having like some other problems with like other like stuff in my body like I got a kidney infection and I was having like abdominal pain and that stuff and I kind of think it might have been from just it seemed like most of the time I was like in that fight or flight state and mm-hmm. when you have like the adrenaline like pumping through your body it's it's not good on like the rest of your organs and stuff like that. So they start yeah. like taking a beating. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. Yeah. I uh, I've had stomach problems for a long time, and um, like I was telling you, I recently had a concussion like um, six months ago or so, and um, that one really messed up my stomach. There's like uh, the vagus nerve goes. It's a big nerve goes from um, your brain to your gut. And, um, that's like, you know, why you hit your head and you throw up kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. Like okay. It's, 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 um, they're very, um, connected and, uh, yeah, that really messed up my stomach. Like it just completely fucking, I was doing really good with the stomach and, and everything. And then, uh, I had problems again. So, okay. and that makes sense. Like when you're in the fight or flight mode, right. It's just putting stress on the body, yeah. the whole body. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, so like after the first one, pretty much I'm, I'm smoking weed every day. Mm-hmm. As soon as I get home, just, I might do eight or ten bong rips, and and that's how I'm getting to sleep every night. Is mm-hmm. that you pretty much just smoke yourself into a daze and and pass out. So are you having headaches at this point? Uh, yeah, like every day, pretty much. Like, might have the odd day where you don't have one, but uh, for the most part, like, I would say headaches for the f- headaches almost every day for the first like two to three weeks, and then it would kind of be like you might get one every like two or three days, but like a severe, like migraine it almost felt like on the top of my head whereas like i never really had a headache there before Mm -hmm. i'm used to just kind of them being on the front but this one was more like on the top Mm -hmm. right yeah so did you find relief with the with the weed is it um a mental relief or did it ever like i mean i help you sleep but um yeah did did it help you uh Like, yes and no. I feel like it kind of helped level me out because, like I said, I almost seemed to be stuck in that fight or flight mode. So this was kind of bringing me back to even keel. But at the same time, it, it definitely wasn't helping, like, the anxiety. It would temporarily, but later it, it would make it worse almost. Um. But yeah, I would say it helped about the same as it hurts. Mm-hmm. Like I don't think it's it's the answer. Mm-hmm. Right. And then kind of like the dependency on it over time. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So um, that would bring us to the next one that you got in the March, right? Yeah. So March 19th, a couple months later, just 
a harmless play. I'm battling kind of against the boards with the guy on the other team. And so sort of cut you off, but you played from January until March, right? So you yeah, go back, so, you back to yeah. hockey, and you're still having these symptoms. I'm still, yes, I'm still. I'm anxious, like constantly. Right. So like I was saying before, like I, I'd, I'd get that nervous energy before games, but that's like semifinals and championship games, like not like a normal game. It's just a regular season game, but. But after the first one, I'm feeling like that all the time. And then on game days, it's almost amplified. So then, like, I'd, I'd have to, like, do, like, a bong rip, smoke weed. Like, as soon as I got home from work or school, if I had to play that night, because, like, the anxiety would be that bad before the game. Okay. But, yeah, the... I'm, from the December one, I didn't play. I went back to playing January 11th. So that's like two weeks. But so um, January 11th, I think I might have played like two or three games. But then when that kidney infection happened, I missed like two weeks there for that because that was like really bad pain. Mm-hmm. And that was like constant. So I, I, it was good that I didn't play for those two weeks. Yeah. But then I was right back before January was over. I was back to, to playing and played right through till March. So did symptoms get worse when you played as far as the headaches and like the overall no. symptoms? No, not, not necessarily. I don't, I mean, it's, it's tough to, to like remember, but I don't ever remember like having to leave a game or like after the game being like all oh, my head or anything like it's not like I would get bad headaches from doing like hard physical activity I guess mm-hmm. right which that is like one of the symptoms they say like if you get that then you gotta scale it back but I yeah. didn't I didn't really get that that's kind of like the first initial thing right so yeah. you could have been to the point where you could you know start exercising again yeah but as soon as that hit to the head came that's when you got in trouble again yeah so yeah march 19th like i was saying just an innocent play i'm kind of battling for like a loose puck against the boards with a guy on the other team and one of my teammates hits him and when he hits him but he kind of falls into me and i just hit my head off the glass like not even necessarily that hard Mm -hmm. but as soon as it happened it just everything went like dark green and it, I'd compare it to like looking through like a welding shield, like, and that's when I was like, "Oh fuck!" Like I'm in trouble, mm-hmm. and just I went right to the bench, and then as soon as play was whistled down, I went right off, and and yeah, it was it was a fog then, but mm-hmm. the thing is, like, so March nineteenth, we're in the the middle of playoffs, and. So I missed, I think I missed two games, and then I played game six and game seven after that. Mm-hmm. So I might have had a week off. So, and symptoms were significantly worse after that. Yeah, symptoms were, were definitely worse. Like, after that, I felt, like, permanently stuck in that fight or flight mode, just completely like on edge like you can feel like just the adrenaline like pumping through your body and Mm -hmm. it's yeah i i don't know how to explain it better than just constantly like on edge yeah yeah and and that's like that's when i'm i was literally just i'd have to smoke myself like stupid to get to bed at night Mm -hmm. but so I mean, not being able to sleep was a big thing for you? Yeah. Yeah. If I didn't, I, it's just like I'd be so like amped up that I wouldn't go to sleep. It'd be like two or three in the morning if I if I wasn't smoking weed. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. So um, where do we go from there? You get that one in March? Yeah. Um, and then, so it's almost like when I first get them, it... For the first like two weeks or so, it's just I'm in like a daze and like a fog, I guess, and you don't really think straight. But it's not. 
it's you not, still feel like yourself. I know. Kind of. Exactly yeah. What you're it's, it's it's like it takes a bit to kind of set in like the the real like symptoms. tough symptoms 100%. that suck. Yeah. So, and for me, so that's this is my last year of junior hockey and then that's it and then i'm playing rack like it's the last year that hockey actually like means something so obviously that's kind of where my head's at when i'm obviously going back way too early i should not have played anymore after the second one but i skip two games i go play the last two and like we end up losing and I just, I remember being in the dressing room, like towel over my head, just like crying, knowing it's all over. Mm-hmm. Everyone's like coming up, trying to talk to me. I can't even put like two words together. Mm-hmm. And it was really like after hockey ended that, the, that the, like the dark times, the symptoms really started to, to mm-hmm. set in. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. The, uh, the show is over. Exactly, so you know, and then, the... and then I'm. That's when I'm. That's when I'm lost. Mm-hmm. I don't have hockey anymore. I after that, like after that, and the symptoms really set in. Like, I just I don't know who I am anymore. Mm-hmm. I was like completely lost. Yeah, and that's like. Then I'm like hard on the weed i'm started smoking cigarettes because like i said i'm constantly anxious so i was doing anything to try to calm down calm down for f- even 15 minutes yeah and i was like eating like shit after that like not exercising because i had nothing to exercise for and mm-hmm. that's when i just started getting way worse as time went on mm-hmm. right um so how long symptoms got significantly worse there in March? Yeah. So this is uh, um, so you got the uh, the series of them in high school. They were yeah. never uh, they were minor, right? The symptoms were only the last couple of weeks. Then you get um, a significant one where you start having really bad symptoms. Jan uh, December twenty sixteen. Um, go back, start playing hockey. Get another one in March. So how long after the second one in March did you really? feel these symptoms how long did it last well uh, i'd say the symptoms really started setting in that like first week after hockey ended so uh, right. probably like two weeks after the concussion yeah the, the symptoms start setting in and i mean that's those symptoms didn't start getting better till like late that summer um i'm saying like late august is when i started to sort of come around but like up until that point like i was like the the lowest of lows and and each day that went on and and i felt like that like didn't know who I was just like anxious about everything I couldn't talk to anybody Mm -hmm. couldn't like talk to my parents like couldn't talk to my friends like I just Mm -hmm. couldn't like keep a conversation going right and and that's when that's when I really started to get dark like just being anxious all the time you're depressed like you can't feel joy Mm-hmm. your mood swings are all out of whack like you yeah. go from mad as hell over like the silliest thing to like almost being in tears and then mm-hmm. you but it's just like i i couldn't like feel happy mm-hmm. like everything would could be going great and i just i was like incapable of like feeling joy almost right and that's that's a tough thing to deal with over like a long period of time and and that's when when it got dark and i never thought of like oh uh, i'm gonna end it like i'm gonna take my life but like the thought crept into my head four or five times like i don't know how much longer i can keep going on like this like 
I just, there was no light at the end of the tunnel mm-hmm. when each day is like that and you don't feel happy about anything and mm-hmm. it just carries on. It's, it really starts like bringing you down. And, and like yeah. I said, it's, it's not like when you break a bone, they say like, Oh, you're good to go in 10 weeks. Like they can't put a timeline on, on your brain. And, and like when I talk, when I talk to like the doctor, it, it's like, well, it could take a year, it could take like five years. And mm-hmm. that's, that's sucks to hear then. Cause it, it almost makes you feel worse. Cause you're like, well, I don't know if I can like live like this for five more years. Mm-hmm. Right. And that really starts like taking a toll on you. hundred mm-hmm. percent. Yeah. No, it, it really starts wearing your mind and, um, yeah, the uncertainty is, I think, really what gets to you. I think, like, yeah. the, uh, am I ever going to be normal? Mm-hmm. Um, I can't do this every day. Like, you just, yeah. There's nothing worse. I don't think there's a worse feeling than not being yourself. Yeah. But being alive. Yeah. But not being you. <laughs> yeah, you're just, you're lost. You just, yeah. I just didn't know, like, who I was and when you question everything you say and do it's mm-hmm. it's exhausting yeah it's the worst feeling i never want to feel like that yeah um and it's like yeah it even makes me feel good to, to hear you say that because you know i've talked to a lot of people as i've said about concussions but um that's the first time i heard someone put it that way and that's like exactly like i can just feel it like when it happens it's like mm-hmm. um you know, like simple little conversations you have. It's like, uh, would I say that? Or like, yeah, like if you see like someone you haven't seen in a couple months, and they're just you see them in passing, and they want to shoot the shit. And after that, I'm running that conversation, that five minute conversation through my head for like two hours. Like, yeah. could he tell that I wasn't myself? Like, did that all make sense? Like, yeah. did I take too long to answer? Is, yeah. is that how I would normally answer that? And yeah. I think the thing is too is that you kind of like subconsciously know that this isn't normally how I would act. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you're like, but your brain isn't like this where it's like this is what I'd normally say. It's like you're fighting just to say something. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like, that's how I felt. And yep. Yeah. I uh, I totally get that. Yeah, but and then so after hockey ends, I'm. I just, yeah, I was just so depressed. All I really did was just like, like I said, just smoke weed every day and I'd play video games and, dog. and that's, that's <laughs> all I could do is yeah. like, I had no energy. Like mm. for me to go to work, it was, it would just like suck the life out of me. Like an mm. eight hour shift, I'd be absolutely wiped at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, yeah, no, that would be tough. And like. You're an electrician, right? Yeah. So it's a manual labor job. Yeah. So and you gotta be like on, like you're working with like power. You can't fuck around. Yeah, you gotta be like awake and sharp, and mm-hmm. it can be dangerous sometimes. So yeah. And then there's like the danger of, you know, if we, as we were talking before, like you gotta be aware of your surroundings. You know. Um, you know, it's a work site, you know, things could hit you in the head potentially. So just, yeah. As in life too, you just got to be careful of your head. Exactly. But yeah, so those symptoms just lasted pretty well straight through. And it wasn't until like late August, um, could also have been a side effect of the concussions. Not sure, but, uh, I developed like three cysts on my tailbone hmm. and that was like, that was like excruciating pain. Like I, I couldn't wear pants to work. I had to wear like gym shorts with my work boots because like the seam on the back of your jeans, every time I would like bend over or whatever, that seam would press like right on the cysts and they were like really like inflamed and infected and wow so so i ended up like getting put off work kind of around late september and was on disability till 
think it was like middle of January, I had the surgery uh, late November. And that's that's when they you go in for day surgery and they, they put you under and they literally, it's almost like they cut a V out there and like remove the whole cyst so that it can't like grow back or anything. Mm-hmm. But you're left with, I had probably a decent size open wound like they stitch it like that and it's got to heal from the inside out mm. but so when that's must going have, on must have been sore yeah when that's going on i can't do anything mm-hmm. i can't i can barely like walk some days it's so painful so that kind of like helped me because i'm not working i, I was I would go to bed around 11 midnight and I'd sleep like 12 plus hours a day, which I think that's when I started to kind of come around just because I think I was just like lacking sleep so much. And and that's really one of the only things that kind of helps your brain heal is when it's like shut off like that and and you're sleeping. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. But that's, that's when I started to come around, but... Then at the same time, when you can't do anything and you all you can do is lay around all day, it it also takes a toll on your mental health because you're you're not doing anything. You, you feel like a loser, mm-hmm. although you can't help it. But at the same time, it it does it does affect you if you just lay around all day. Hundred percent, it does. Yeah. No your mind needs engagement your body needs engagement yeah yeah it's pretty easy to yeah and and it was it was good in the sense that i got to kind of start healing but then it almost it opens another can of worms i'm on i'm on disability i'm making like 60 percent of my normal salary Mm -hmm. my bills didn't just go away that's when the the credit card starts getting run up and 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 that's when I start stressing and, and worrying about like paying my bills and, and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So that's that started to like hurt my mental health at the same time. Mm-hmm. So it's just it was kind of a win lose. Yeah, it really was. Like you're you're getting it's like you're taking one step forward and then like two back. It almost felt like mm-hmm. right. At least you're getting the rest in the brain. Yeah. So you go back to work in January of that yep. year? Middle of January of 2018. So was there any relief after all that sleeping? Yeah, that that's that was when like I started to come around and then like going back to work definitely helped cuz from from sitting around all that time like I couldn't wait to get back to work and a start like making money again but also like you feel like you're like a productive member of society again yeah and so that definitely helped but like I, the first couple of weeks were good but i'd say like after like a month of it uh, it was almost like a, it just like drained me again and i was kind of like slipping back into like what i was mm mm-hmm. mhm and still, like at that point, I'm, I'm still like sort of having symptoms, but like I could have a good day, but then I'd have like two or three bad ones, and and it would kind of go like that. Yeah. But and at that point, I was still like smoking weed every day. Just, at that point, I like need it to go to sleep. You're just so used to it at that point. Yeah. If I didn't, I'd. I would start getting like the headaches and I, I couldn't go to sleep at night. Right. Yeah. So maybe start to fall into like the sleep. Your brain wasn't getting like enough sleep as it needed mm. again. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, how long did that last? Um, I would say, like almost a year like you i could string together like a couple good days and but then 
something like staying up too late a couple times or something like that it would almost it would I could tell it would like really set me back and and I'd start like being really anxious again and, and stuff like that mm-hmm. but yeah just being back to work at first was good but then I was just kind of got back in a rut mm-hmm. just go to work I'd be tired as hell after get home eat smoke weed and play video games just that would just became my routine because mm-hmm. at that point I'm still I'm still really struggling with conversations that was like my big thing like just talking to people because I was still kind of lost mm-hmm. so I'm, I'm not the hockey player anymore I'm, I'm not the I'm not a big strong guy anymore I was fucking getting fat out of shape because I had to lay on the couch for those like four months or whatever it was Mm -hmm. like had no drive anymore and and Mm -hmm. so I really did still feel like lost that's that part of the concussion never went away Mm -hmm. and so when you're when you feel like you're on all day at work like because I felt like I had to just like really beyond even just to carry on simple shooting the shit conversations like throughout the day at the job site like when I got home I would just be wiped mm-hmm. and that's no, I would just like I said smoke weed and play games till I passed out and repeat mm-hmm. um, I think that's interesting what you said about uh, like you're not that big strong hockey player anymore it's like I felt like that too like it is like demasculine in a way um because like you're so vulnerable you know Mm -hmm. like even if you are strong physically you know that a hit to that like a not very hard hit to the head can really fuck you up long term yeah that's the thing like you go before the bad one you you, f- you do you feel like you know you're a big tough guy nothing can hurt me or whatever and you know if someone tried to fight me it'd be no problem but then after that it's like if I ever got like suckered or something just out of the blue like out like I could be like really fucked up mm-hmm. and that's like scary to think of and like you said you feel really vulnerable mm-hmm. it is like eye opening in a way to um to know that and to know the consequences of violence mm. um, and like try to avoid it at all costs yeah you know um, but it really it does take a damper on your your confidence yeah um, but um, yeah so where, where would we go from there well yeah like like I said I got back to work and it was it was good for a bit but I just I never really got out of that rut like my, at this point like my my credit card was basically like maxed out from being on the disability and then I'm in such a hole even when I start working again like it's, it's hard to get out of that then I'm just basically working to pay the bills I'm not really like Good having it yeah I'm not I was only I only had my second block at the time since I completely bombed it when I was in school in January I didn't Mm -hmm. pass my third one so I wasn't making like that great of money so I I was really just making enough to get by I was like living paycheck to paycheck just paying the bills I couldn't even attempt to start like paying the credit card off Mm -hmm. and and then you start stressing about that and you're depressed about that and you don't have money to do anything like you can't go have a couple of drinks with your friends or like go out to dinner mm-hmm. and that's that it takes a toll on you because you kind of need to get out and do those things to to start like but, trying to find yourself start living again yeah 100 percent. right and like at that point like when i'm in that rut i'm depressed because i'm I'm just I'm not happy with like who I am after the concussions because I never really got back to where I was before mm-hmm. and I'm still like when you're like that obviously you don't have any self-confidence so I would be 
like extremely, I would get extremely anxious about having to talk to anybody, even like my own friends. Because mm-hmm. you have no self confidence and and you're questioning everything you say and do. And mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, hundred um, percent. Know what you're talking about? It's uh, yeah, it's really hard, man. Yeah, and 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 I would say like. I was I was in that rut till June of 2019, and that's when I f- finally like started to buckle down because I couldn't keep like dealing with like the credit card debt and all that. So in June I buckled down, and that's when I I challenged the Red Seal test and ended up passing it on the, like my first try, and that's that was like a, a good boost of self-confidence and mm-hmm. I got like almost a $6 raise. So, so that helped. I was able to start making more money to start paying off the credit card debt. But it, yeah, it wasn't till that, that I started to actually come around and I wasn't feeling like depressed all the time or anxious. Mm-hmm. Well, um, how about symptoms? Where's, uh, so, the last concussion was in 17. Yep. And then, so all the way till 19, you're dealing with these symptoms. Mm-hmm. Um, was was there headaches through all the way to 19 or was it more just the... Uh, like anxiety? I still get the headaches. Yeah. But I could I could maybe string together a, a good two or three weeks with that one, but then I will just randomly get one. Doesn't matter. Like I get them in the... 3 a.m. sometimes like it, it wasn't just any time of day I could randomly get one I mean it would last like maybe two or three hours but yeah the headaches kind of they would just appear from time to time was that is that the same place same like just kind of top of the head um so 19 you started to feel better in June yep Um, but yeah, like I said, like I, other than like studying and and passing my test, I, I really hadn't changed a whole lot. Like, I guess after that I was, I just got really comfortable Mm -hmm. because like from the outside looking in, you think, oh, there's Mark, like he's got a house, he's got his dog, like red seal now he's got a career solid girlfriend like he's doing all right and and i just i guess then i kind of i stopped putting like effort in kind of in all like aspects Mm -hmm. of my life i just i just got like too comfortable Mm -hmm. right like i was still i just go to work go home smoke weed play games I, I was doing better with the conversations, but I still, I still wasn't where I wanted to be. Mm-hmm. Right. I, I definitely think like getting my test and the raise that, that helped me a bit, but I just, I, I stopped trying to get better because mm-hmm. I just thought, well, I guess this is as good as it gets. Mm-hmm. Right. And at that point I had come so far, I was I was okay kind of with where I was at because of the lows like were so low that where I was then in in June I was I was like this isn't too bad I can I can deal with this but that's when I I guess I stopped trying to like improve myself or get better right right um um yeah so where, where does that so were you playing sports at all through that time from 17 to 19 um i played a bit of ball hockey right yeah because i've seen you there yeah so i i played in a league uh in the summer and the winter every sunday just one game every sunday and then i played in a kind of like a pickup just throw sticks thing uh 
Mondays and Wednesdays. So that was, that was like the extent of my physical activity though. I wasn't working out or anything like that. Just ball hockey. So did you find that went okay? Yeah. Yeah. That was, I really liked that because that's when you're not sitting around thinking about kind of how miserable you are, how you're not where you want to be. That was a, a good hour, hour and a half where I just could forget about that stuff and just think about like playing hockey again. Mm -hmm. So when you started doing that, were you ever, were you worried about like hitting your head there or is it always kind of on your mind? Not really. It probably should have been, Mm -hmm. but I was just so happy to actually be doing something that I, I didn't really think of that. Mm -hmm. Right. That's interesting. That was kind of the same with me. Like I played in that league too. And, um, it was like a year or something after I got the concussion and I was still like, you know, very weary. I would never play a contact sport, but I yeah. just figured like it's ball hockey and it'll be something just fun to do. Yeah. Um, and it was good for me to like do it and I did it for like years, but, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's interesting. I'm thinking about it a lot right, right now. Um, I'm sure you are too. It's kind of like the the risk reward, yeah. Where, because something could happen in that league, something could and something could happen when you leave tonight. You yeah, can slip and fall on exactly. each other. But it's like, That's... at what point do I start taking risks? Right. At what point do I start just being myself and take calculated risks? You know, yep. I never put myself in a situation to hit my head, but start being myself or find what that is yeah. for me moving forward yep and and my parents brought that up too like at any point i could be playing ball hockey and someone not even mean to they just sticks there and i step on it and fall into the wall and hit my head mm-hmm. but they're like at the same time you you can't just live in a bubble your whole life you have yeah. to do some stuff but yeah yeah it's just i have to be extra careful now exactly yeah and it's funny too when it goes to the confidence thing i find like I found that when you're really nervous about hitting your head, that's when you're going to hit your head. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you finally get your confidence back, it's like, it seems like you go forever without hitting it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that, that's probably part of it. Like I, I never really thought about that playing ball hockey. Yeah. Cause I, I was still like decently athletic. So it's not like I would be like tripping over my own feet out there. It would have to be like something fluky for, me to go down in a heap i guess Mm -hmm. so i yeah i never really thought about it's like something like that happening while Mm -hmm. i was playing which is probably good yeah right on so that brings us to just this past june right yep so that's when you start feeling better you do the test and then you feel kind of like you just were in a comfortable place you didn't i was um, yeah i was kind of like this this might be as good as it gets and and that's when i stopped like trying really i guess and still just playing ball hockey a couple times a week still smoking weed every day just playing games but i still wasn't wasn't great with like conversations i just i would just like i would avoid it really Mm -hmm. i might go out like drink with my friends like once every like three months Mm -hmm. right right so, um, where does that bring us to now? Well, was I was like? kind of, I, I was in that like comfortable, like stuck in that rut almost until Kelsey and I broke up because like I said, I was just so comfortable. Like I didn't, I felt like I didn't really need to put effort in like, like Kelsey would never like give me shit about not going places or anything like that she she would let me like sit at home and knew that I was like struggling with that stuff so she she never really like pushed me to to go do that stuff but like whenever we broke up that's when I really had to like look myself in the mirror and that's when I had to tell myself the truth like I was being a pathetic loser just smoking weed playing games all the time when there was shit i should have been doing like 
at this point, my my fucking my house was a complete mess. Like my body was a mess. All my muscles were right tight just from being like stressed for so long. Mm-hmm. I felt like my body was like turning in on itself almost because, mm-hmm. like I like I said, if I played ball hockey, I'd be hobbling around for a day or two after like all Mm -hmm. my muscles be that sore Mm -hmm. and yeah it wasn't till like i really when we broke up and i really like sat down and was just like you got to do more like Mm -hmm. you're you're a a shell of of who you're meant to be like Mm -hmm. right so like it, it definitely needed to happen because i just like I said, I was so comfortable. I stopped putting the effort in. Mm-hmm. All of that. Right. Well, that's awesome, man. That um, you kind of had that realization. Yeah. And um, you know, taking that and moving forward. Is there anything you want to talk about, like, as far as your goals or what you plan on doing moving forward, or things that have helped you so far, kind of thing? Um. Well. It was, it was when, it was when the break happened that, and I just like, I looked myself in the mirror and got real with myself that I was like, I gotta fucking, I gotta fix my house up. I gotta like fix my body. So, so I started just making sure that I would stretch like 30 minutes a day. Mm -hmm. And then I'd hit like the foam roller for 10 minutes or so after and, and even doing that I found like helped a lot Mm -hmm. just working on yourself would like it has a real positive effect on your mind 100% when you when you when you get like disciplined about like I'm stretching every day Mm -hmm. 30 minutes it 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 really it helps your muscles you feel better but also your brain it's it's good for your mind to be to buckling down and doing stuff to to make you feel better Mm -hmm. committed to it exactly yeah so so yeah i started the stretching and then uh i tried to either go for like a run or go on the the bike 20 minutes or so like each day just trying to do something right and how's that been going so far uh it's been going good like definitely feel better from it Mm mm-hmm um, but like, I don't want to be content with that either. Like I know, I know I still got to work on like my communication skills. So I'm trying to, to like get out and, and do more things and talk to people and kind of put myself in those uncomfortable situations because like, that's when you kind of learn about yourself is when when you're in those uncomfortable situations like you don't learn anything about yourself laying around on the couch when you're like comfortable Mm -hmm. 100 yeah man i agree with that wholeheartedly i'm thinking about that a lot you know it's like it's a saying but like it rings so true especially when you're going through whatever you're going through like nothing good happens on the couch you know exactly like nothing good happens on the couch no you know, you got to get out and try. Yeah, you got to push yourself and, yeah, just try to find out, like, what you're made of, really. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so, um, I just want to say thanks so much for doing this, man. Like, I really appreciate it. Not a problem. It. I appreciate you having me. Uh, is there any final notes that you have there? Uh, not really. Like, uh, I guess I just wanted to share my story, like, in the hopes of even if it helped like one person because mm-hmm. like hearing Tim Thomas's story, like that meant the world to me to just to know that someone else went through that. So like, yeah. even if, even if one person like hears this and, and they reach out for help cause they're going through post concussion syndrome stuff, then it was all worth it. 100%. Like I was, I was nervous as hell for the last two days to come do this, but mm-hmm. It's like I knew I'd feel better after, and and like I said, if even if it helps one person, it was all worth it. Hundred percent, right? Yeah, but, but yeah, hearing hearing him come out and 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 say all that, it it was just such a relief to know 
that someone else went through it because in my own brain it just it seemed unbelievable to have those feelings from a couple hits to the head yeah and last so long too right yeah and, and that's the thing like and the the biggest thing that i want to stress is like you need to take the time to heal if you have a concussion mm-hmm Hundred percent. You can't be rushing back because no. the second one after is is so much worse. It's mm. it's just not worth it. Hundred percent. And it's your it's your life. It's your brain. It's the motor. It's the motor. It's what like whatever sport it is, whatever you're trying to get back to, it's it's not worth it. Hundred percent. It's not worth it. You know. It no. might seem like it right now. Yeah. But it's really not. If you let yourself heal. You can come back and play again. You exactly. Know? You know, you have a whole life, thing. a whole life of living. I know it's not worth a, a, a season or a sport. No. Um, yeah, if you get a concussion, stretch your neck. Yeah. Um, you probably have whiplash. Yeah. Um, because it needs your neck needs a whip to have a concussion. Um, yeah. Get the blood flow to the head. That's um, the big fatty thing. acids. Yeah. Yeah. All this <laughs> the stuff. old fish oils. Yeah. But um, thanks so much for coming on, man. Yeah, I appreciate you having me. I yeah. think you're doing a great thing here. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, thanks for sharing all this. Not a problem, buddy. Woo!